While at a tag sale last year, my wife and I came across these two window mount drive-in speakers for like five bucks each. It was a ridiculous, awesome price, so we snatched them up. Drive-in theater manufacturing company, Kansas City, Kansas. Made from Geoprene? If I had my own preen, it would be Geoprene. <laughs> Fast forward about a year or so, and I'm actually finally making this project happen. To remove the back on this, I had to use some needle nose pliers. This thing had some special screw heads that I have not actually seen before or had a bit for. I did find one on eBay for like $25, and according to that eBay title, this is a specific screw just for driving speakers. So I'm probably not ever going to run into it again. Unless I do more stuff with driving speakers, that is. Here's a little shot of the inside. I had to snip off the speaker cable because it was so baked and old and crunchy, it just had to go and be replaced. So I took this new speaker wire, soldered it to the contacts, then I added the risers and base plate to keep the amp off the aluminum body of the speaker so there's no condensation or anything like that that could happen, and muck up the electronics. Once I had it connected to Bluetooth, instead of making sense of the diagrams, I just tested out which of the four terminals sounded the best when I hooked the speaker wire up to it with music coming out. Now, maybe the kids these days don't understand what a drive-in is or was. There are very few of them left in the U.S. According to Wikipedia, there are less than 300 now worldwide these days, when during their peak they made up about 25% of all the theaters in the world. When you went to the drive-in, you pulled up next to one of these things, rolled your window down, and plopped this thing in your window. This carried the sound from the screen. Nowadays, from what I've experienced, they transmit the sound from the movie over broadcast radio stations at a very low power, so that you can tune into these radio stations for the theater, and it comes over your car stereo. And now, on with the show. Oh. I had to take the power plug over to the grinder for a moment to get rid of some of the plastic jacketing that was around the plug, whatever that's called, I'm not an electrician, so it could fit through the hole that was already there for the power slash speaker cord. To hold the Bluetooth amp in there once I test that it fits, I just used a healthy helping of hot glue. Also while I had the hot glue out, I took the aluminum wiring diagram slash manufacturer information that was provided with the amp and hot glued it to the back of the case, so in case in the future I need to crack this open and find out who the manufacturer was and where the speakers connect to, I know that information down the road, so helping out future me. Running another test here, and man, this thing is loud. It sounds pretty damn good for a decades-old speaker cone. And where the power cable comes out from the back of the speaker, I'm just filling that in with some hot glue to make a little more waterproof and tightness. This, this is... Then I screwed back on the case using some different screws which had a Phillips head which are a lot more accessible and better than the other screws with the needle nose pliers because I just don't think I can get that tight enough on there to make this as waterproof as possible. Now, it's time to put this bad boy up in the backyard. 
I'll pick a winner in the comments, by the way, for the pencil. See a link in the description below with a belt sheath and some stickers if you can guess the songs, song and band, in the order they were in the video. This is up until I switch over to the licensed music I use once I whip up Music for Making, which is another channel I run so I can have royalty music playing in the background while I'm working. And another cool little thing about this drive-in speaker design is that little clip there fits right on this pole that I have in the backyard, which used to be there for the above-ground pool, which is no longer there and is now a patio. Now this has been up in the backyard for a good two months now, and it still works great, even with all the heat and humidity we've had up here in the Northeast this summer. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you get your own ideas for repurposing things for use as they were not originally intended to, but maybe also sort of as they were originally intended to, like the speaker acting as a speaker, just with modern technology. Thanks for watching. Please remember to replace the speaker on the post when you leave the theater.